Matthew 28 says this, early on the Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. And the reason they did that is that it was part of the Jewish custom to go to the tomb or to go and put spices on a dead body and embalm that body. And look what it says. Suddenly, as they got there, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothes was as white as snow. The gods shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid, he said. I think it would have been a little bit different. Maybe it would have been like, don't be afraid. <laughs> I'm just trying to visualize this. But see, the angel said, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. I don't know if you've ever been afraid in life or you've got to the point where you've lost all hope in life and we get to the point where life is just lost its meaning and it's lost its uh, fire, where things turn out nothing like you actually expected or, or maybe wasn't seen, it didn't turn out to be what you envisioned it to be for your life. Well, you know, this is a story of, of the disciples. The, the disciples have seen Jesus. They followed Jesus their whole life for the, for the years that Jesus had called them. They had given up many things. They've given up their businesses. They've given up uh, friends and, and family, and they've started to follow Jesus. And Jesus is their salvation. Jesus is their savior. Jesus is their foundation for living. And on Friday, they see Jesus be crucified. They see, they see all that they've invested into, all that they've put their hope into is now nailed to a cross, and, and they've lost all hope. And, and as they go to the tomb, as the, the two ladies go to Mary, go to the tomb on, on the Sunday morning, they, they've gone there with no hope. They've lost all hope. But as they encounter the empty tomb, they leave different to the way that they arrived because Jesus has raised from the dead and he is alive and he is honored every word that he said that he would do in their life amen and and so we see the, how the resurrection transformed their life that how friday was was part of god's plan and so was sunday uh, you, you know friday with under, without sunday leaves us hopeless but sunday without friday gives no value to the crucifixion yeah, i like to put it like this on friday jesus paid everything but on Sunday, Jesus changed everything. Come on, he's worthy of that, amen? He's worthy of a praise. You see, on Friday, he paid for sickness, sin, and death. But on Sunday, he had the victory over everything he paid for. You see, the resurrection changes everything. You know, in 1 Corinthians, Paul writes to the church, and he, to you and I, and he says this, And if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless. And, our, and your faith is useless. You see, the resurrection changes everything for us. The resurrection is undeniable, and it is proof that you and I can trust in every word that God has spoken over our life and what God has spoken in Scripture. You know, the resurrection is, has been argued, and, and people try to discredit the resurrection. Uh, history says, repeat this event. Science says, explain how this has happened. Time says, forget about it. But faith says, you have to believe in it. You see, you can't explain the resurrection. You can't forget about it. And it cannot be, and it won't be repeated. But if you have faith in it, it will change your life forever. The resurrection is God's triumph. It's His victory. It's a trumpet declaring that you and I are more than conquerors because Jesus conquered. It is the greatest victory. It's not just a victory in the moment, but it's a victory that people experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And friends, I'm here to tell you that the resurrection took place over 2,000 years ago. The power that it took to raise Jesus is living in you. And you can experience the resurrection in every area of your life today. It wasn't just a once-off event. It is for you and I to experience. 
The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says that if the rulers and those that had crucified Jesus knew that he would raise from the dead, they would not have crucified him. You see, the victory of the resurrection speaks so loud. And there's so many arguments, and like I say, people have tried to put arguments against the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. One of the arguments is this, is that the woman and the disciples went to the wrong tomb. Apparently, they never had ways. <laughs> Pin location. Boop. But you know what? That, if you went to the wrong tomb, then they wouldn't have been worried about the stolen body because they would have recovered the stolen body. The second argument is this, is that the disciples stole Jesus' body, inventing a new faith, and they, and they invented a story that they were willing to suffer and be persecuted and face martyrdom for. The third argument is that some believe that Jesus never really died on the cross, but merely swooned, and later in the coolness of the tomb, revived enough to escape the tomb. This falls short of understanding the severe beatings of crucifixion. And the soldiers that witnessed Jesus dying as they pierced that spear through his side. The fourth argument is that the disciples say that they say that the disciples who saw Jesus after the resurrection were just hallucinating. 1 Corinthians 15 says that Jesus appeared to over 500 different people after he had resurrected. The evidence of a resurrection is overwhelming. The story of the empty tomb is in all four gospels. And the resurrection is the disciples' message of salvation for all mankind. It gave them the boldness to proclaim the gospel. The church would not have fabricated such a story of the resurrection and then made, listen, this is true, and then made women witnesses to the empty tomb and resurrection. And the reason is, is that in those days in the Jewish culture and Eastern culture, the witness of a woman was not reliable and credible. So the church could never have been birthed and the resurrection could never be validated on the witness of a woman. So it just nullifies that. Not to say that women don't have a voice. In actual fact, Jesus deliberately used women to give them a voice. Okay, so let's just clear that. I don't want any letters. There's something incredible that happened that Sunday morning that caused the Jewish believers to worship on the first day of the week instead of the Sabbath. See, they never worshipped on any other day except of the, on the Sabbath. But they saw the resurrected king. They bowed down and they worshipped him because he's alive. He's the resurrected king. The resurrection is nothing short of a miracle and it is the greatest victory. And we see this in the transformation of the life of the disciples. Do you know that up to this point, the Bible says in Mark 14, that while Jesus was on the cross, his disciples scattered. They flee. Do you know to flee something is different to leave something? When you leave something, you walk away from it. But when you flee, you scatter, you go. The Bible says that when they took Jesus to be crucified, all his disciples just fled. Now this resurrection took these disciples who fled in fear, standing up, proclaiming that they would give the rest of their life. Doesn't matter the persecution. Doesn't matter what kind of death they would ever face. But they had the boldness to declare because there's something that happens when you get a revelation that our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He paid the price. And then on the third day, He rose again. There is a boldness that comes upon us. See, even the Apostle Paul, who gave his life to destroy Christians, to destroy followers of Jesus on the road to Damascus, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, appeared to him. And in that moment, he turned his whole life around. And for the rest of his life, he became the greatest advocate of the gospel, establishing the gospel and building churches throughout Europe and Asia. Something changes in our life when we realize there is a resurrected king and that there is a king of kings and the Lord of lords who loves us. Jesus said this in Revelations 1.18. I am he who lives. And I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I love the fact that Jesus is amen in his own sermon there. <laughs> Look what he says. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Jesus saying, I've got the keys. You know what keys speak about? It speaks about authority. It speaks about access. Jesus says, I've been, I have the keys of everything. You see, it's a big love. It's a big sacrifice. 
but it's a massive victory for you and I. It's not just heaven's victory, it's our victory. It's a victory for every person here today in this room. And billions of people all around the world have experienced eternal life because they have put their faith in the resurrection. They have put their faith in Jesus Christ. You see, the battle on the cross was Jesus to be for Jesus to endure, but the victory is for you and I to enjoy. It changes the way we see God, the way we look at God. The resurrection, church, listen, understand this. The resurrection is what separates Christianity from every other faith. No other God came down from his position of authority, from his throne. No other God ever came down and dwelt and became like one of his people, dwelt among them, and then gave his life for them, for all of their faults and failures. And then on the third day rose again and then gave his power to his people. No other God has ever done that. That's why Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and he is the King of Kings and he is God of all in Jesus' name. Let's give him some praise this morning. Amen. You see, Sunday, Sunday's victory is the beginning of salvation. You see, the resurrection completes our salvation. But the Sunday's victory is God saying to you and I, there is more for you and I. There is more than you and I just going to heaven. You see, Friday, Jesus paid it. Sunday tells us we can get through. You see, my biggest fear and, and truly honestly, is to realize, and I believe this, is that why there is so many unfulfilled, unfulfilled Christians and believers in this world is because they're stuck in Friday's difficulty. And as long as you stay in Friday's difficulty, you'll never experience Sunday's victory. And God wants you and I to move from past Friday's difficulty and start to live in Sunday's victory because Sunday's victory makes Friday's pain worth what we go through in life in Jesus' name. You know, Friday is a reminder, but Sunday is the power. Sunday is the power. Friday was hell's party, but heaven knew what was coming. Don't let hell have a party over your life. God knows what he's planned for your life. Don't get stuck on Friday. You've got to look to Sunday. On hell on Friday was rejoicing. On Saturday night they were partying. But on Sunday, heaven started singing and hell started screaming because there was a risen king and he is alive today. Come on, we've got to realize that we've got to live in Sunday's victory. It was a big victory. It wasn't just heaven's victory. It is your victory. You can have victory in your marriage. You can have victory in your relationships. You can have victory with your children. You can have victory in your health. You can have victory in your finances because Jesus defeated everything on the Friday. Look what it says here. One of my favorite scriptures when it comes to speaking about the resurrection. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you, that same resurrection Spirit and power that it took to raise Jesus from the dead, now lives in your mortal body. That means that while you're alive, there are dead areas in your life. There are areas where you maybe you've given up. There's dreams and hopes that maybe have been, been gone to, to bed and, and slowly died. But the Bible says that same Spirit that raised Jesus, that brought life into the dead body of Jesus, now can bring life into those dead areas. You've got to look at your life, not from Friday, perspective but from Sunday's victory in Jesus name so many times in my own personal life and and many in my working life and just doing life on a day-to-day -day basis it felt, it felt like man I felt like many times like those disciples when those women that came went to the tomb felt a little bit hopeless felt like man I don't know how to get I'm going to get through there but you know what I had to make a decision you got to make this decision I'm going to look at Sunday I'm not going to focus on the pain of Friday I'm going to push through and every time as you start to do that you allow the living power of the resurrection power to come and start working on the inside of you and it transforms your life the empty tomb is a clear a reminder that pain is temporary for those who believe in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. This is what we know. What does this victory mean? What, did it, what does this victory say to you and I? If you're taking notes, the first thing is this, that on the other side of pain is victory. You know, even though Jesus endured the highest pain physically, emotionally, and spiritually, 
On the other side of his pain, there was a victory that was waiting for him. The empty tomb is still our hope today. It tells you and I that there is hope for a better to today. Today you may have lost hope. You may feel like quitting. You may feel like giving up. You may be going through pain. But I want to encourage you if you trust God and you allow God's resurrection power in that victory and you start walking from a perspective of victory in those areas of pain and disappointment in your life, you know what you are doing, church? You are inviting the resurrection power of God and you're inviting hope to come into your life and you and I as believers cannot live without hope. You start to invite that into your life. And as that power starts to come in, God starts to work, work it out. You know, you might be in the middle of a test. And you might be in the middle of a trial. And you might be in the middle of disappointment. And you could have lost hope today. I want to encourage you. There was a time between Friday and Sunday. You might be stuck in Saturday. But I'm yet to encourage you. As the old Pentecostal preacher would say, Sunday is coming for you in Jesus' name. You see, it wasn't a good Friday when Jesus was crucified. It wasn't a good Friday when he was crucified. It was a bad Friday, but God was not finished. If you're still alive and it doesn't look good and it's still bad, you, it's not over because God is not finished. Because God is faithful and he who begins a good work in you is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's why one of my favorite scriptures is Romans chapter 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Everything, all things, all things work for good. And God doesn't work it the way we expect him to work it. God doesn't work it the way we think it's going to work it out. But what I do know is that when I live my life with hope and I surrender myself and say, God, I'm giving my life to you, Lord, and I'm focusing my attention on what you have accomplished on the Sunday, the resurrection and the victory. You know what happens? God works it out and he turns, I'm telling you now, church, he turns loss, he turns tragedy, he turns divorce, he turns bankruptcy, he works it all for God good. Why? Because he is a good God. And he is a faithful God. He said he would raise his son and he raised his son from the dead in Jesus name. Come on, if you believe it, give him a better praise today. Amen. The next thing is this. What does this mean? This means, this victory means that his victory is our freedom. Galatians 5 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. And do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Freedom simply means that you and I are no longer slaves. That we no longer carry the burden and the yoke of slavery. That Jesus broke it. He set us free from that so that you and I would no longer be slaves, but we would be sons and daughters. That we would be heirs to his kingdom. That we would be participators in this victory. You and I got to live in his freedom. You got to live in his grace. You got to live in his victory. You got to live in his power. Don't call, live your life like a slave and feel like you're defeated. No, no, Jesus defeated that. You and I have freedom. We have freedom. Live in the freedom that God has given you. Don't be so heavy. Don't look at everything that's happening around us. You know what happens? It puts a weight on you. You've got to realize, no, no, no. The resurrection, that means victory. It means freedom. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm not a slave to what's happening in our country. I live in the different realm. I live in the victory of Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm full of joy. We live in the victory. It paid for our freedom. Living the freedom. Don't allow life to keep you small. Don't allow life to make you dwarfed. You've got to live with, live with a posture that we're victorious. Ever been in this team? Ever been on the side of a winning team? Come on, you don't walk like this. Well, we just won. No, no, you walk like no one can beat us. You've got to live in a victory. You've got to live. Don't be, don't allow, allow sin. Don't allow life just to keep you so small. It's time to burst out. There's freedom. There's growth. There's multiplication. There's blessing that comes from the resurrection. You know, the disciples, before Jesus, they knew Jesus rose from the dead. You know, they were all hiding in a room. They were confined. They were living in fear. They were anxious. They thought the religious leaders that crucified Jesus were coming after them to crucify him. But you know what happens? The moment they heard that Jesus rose from the dead, they broke out of that room. They went out and they started to plant the churches around the world. They started to preach the gospel of Jesus. Why? Because his victory gives us freedom. Get your boldness back. Get your confidence back. You are victorious today in Jesus Christ. 
Third thing is his victory empowers the church. See, the early church was birthed and empowered by the Spirit of God after the resurrection. Not only was the church empowered, they all lived with purpose. You see, it empowers us to live with purpose. Even Peter, on the night that Jesus was taken in, denied Jesus three times. No coming back from that. But when he heard about the resurrected Jesus, and when he, Jesus saw him back in this ocean, you see, Jesus said, Peter, you will be a fisherman, and you will fish for men. Because he was a fisherman fishing for fish. But when he denied Jesus, he went back to his old way of living. But when he saw the resurrected king, and Jesus said, Peter, come. Peter threw away everything, took off his coat, and ran to Jesus. And you know what the resurrection tells you and I? Is that you and I have another chance. You and I, God's not finished with us. Jesus didn't say to Peter, you're out of the squad because you denied me. He said, no, 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 this is just going to fuel you. This is just going to ignite the passion. And I'm here to declare, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how far you've slipped back. If you take on the fact that Jesus loves you, and he's calling you today, and he's beckoning you, and he says, you know what, I forgive you. I've got power for you to overcome. You know what, it changes everything in our life because he is alive in Jesus' name. The fourth thing is this, is that you and I, can live victorious. You and I can live victorious. You've got to live victorious. To live victorious, you've got to believe. You've got to believe that he has overcome. And I don't think we need any more proof. The empty tomb is the proof that Jesus has given us the victory. It tells us that we can trust every word that Jesus has spoken over our life. We don't have to go through life defeated and doubting. You see, the empty tomb is not salvation just to get to heaven. The empty tomb is salvation and then victorious life living. There are so many Christians that are saved and waiting to go to heaven miserable. But the empty tomb says, no, you've got salvation. The toll has been paid and now you're on the highway, baby. You ride and you give it your best and you don't have to worry about what's happening around you because you have been given the power to live victorious. We live victorious. Look what it says in Revelations. But one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weeping. And I want to encourage people today. Life has been difficult. Life has been tough. There's been disappointment. God knows every disappointment. God knows every pain. He knows every tear you've cried. But there is a time where we have to say, will I feed the pain of Friday or will I feed the victory of Sunday? And whatever you feed will grow. And the Bible says here, stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. Let the spirit of the winning team come upon your life. When the woman came to the tomb, you know what? She found the angels sitting on the rock. The angel could have sat anywhere, could have sat on the side, could have stood in front of it, but you know what? He was sitting on top of it. You know what heaven was saying? We are over the thing that blocked. We are over the thing that blocked the resurrection coming through. I'm telling you right now, you've been designed to sit on that which has been trying to defeat you instead of it sitting on top of you. You are victorious today. You are God's masterpiece. As Jesus is in heaven, so are we. Number five, number five, the victory means that the devil is defeated come on come on look what it says in Colossians chapter 2 verses 5 15 in this way he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities and he shamed them publicly his victory over them on the cross John 11 says this Jesus said to Martha I am the resurrection and I am the life the one who believes in me even though he died they will live we have been victorious. The devil has been defeated. Some of us, we got to go home today. And I'm not trying to animate the gospel in any way. But what we need to do is we need to remind ourselves who has won the battle. And we need to remind the devil who defeated him. And sometimes you got to go, devil, no, not today. You're under my feet because God has given me the victory in Jesus' name. He is alive. Come on, let's give him one more praise. He's a good God. He's a faithful God. Come on, let's lift up his name. Jesus. Come on, let's shout out Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you take your seat? I'm over my time. You clapped too much. Jesus said, when he came to the tomb of Lazarus, I am 
the resurrection resurrection is not an event it is a person and his name is Jesus and he's the one who brings life into every area 